Hi guys, Dr. J here, and in this video we're going to be talking about a web-based LiDAR visualization tool called Plast.io. And I like this tool because it's very simple to use and get started with. It just has a very limited set of functionality, but it's really good for being able to take a quick look at LiDAR datasets that you might have. So here we are at Plast.io, and you'll notice they have a couple of example datasets that we could look at. I'm actually going to go ahead and upload one of my own. Um, and this is a data set that we've looked at in a different video. So you can check that out. You can see the link in the description below. Here is my data set, pointsclean.las. And the browser will upload that and immediately visualize it for us to see. Now this is a coastline actually. So if I bring us around to a point of view here. So this is one part of Port-au-Prince, Haiti. And the coastline is here. You can see the water off on the left there. And we have a river flowing through this region. And um, this is the data set that we're looking at. You can adjust the density of points that you want to load into the browser. Um, if you change this point density, you'll need to re-upload the image so that you can um, so that it will actually load that many points. Um, it has some information about the data set, file version, whether or not it's compressed, number of points, etc. So if I scroll down here a bit, we can um, change the units of our world. Uh, we can also change our camera perspective uh, to different ones, orthographic, top-down, or our original perspective view. And you can also change the field of view. You can kind of zoom in and zoom out, and that'll uh, be useful depending on what kind of view you're looking at. One of the things which is really nice is that you can change the particle size of the points in your image so that if you have areas to fill, um, gaps, for example, in your data, those will get filled in. In our case, we have a pretty dense point cloud, pretty high quality, so we'll make those uh, particle size as small as possible to get that detail. And then one thing that I really like is the Z exaggeration. Just the image here a little bit. Okay, so now we can exaggerate the Z values of these pixels so that we can really sort of start to see the elevation change. Now this area is a very flat area. It's actually a sedimentary basin in Haiti. Um, but when I raise that Z exaggeration, you can start to see things like vegetation. You can start to see, you can really see those coastlines pop out. Um, so that's a pretty neat feature that you can use if you have uh, elevation changes that you're really trying to look at. You can also do um, colorization. You could color based on uh, point classification and do different things with that. You can also change the color modulators for the intensity. Uh, so for example, I can change to a, a heat map grayscale. You can also change the source of data that you're using for intensity. So currently, this is just the intensity of the returned images, which of course tells you, you can already see, tells you lots of information about the type of source. You can also do a, a heat map grayscale, which will be related to the elevation. So you can see that there. Um, you can blend intensity with color. So here we have our classification points. So I can change my colorization to height map. So whatever the elevation are, it'll color based on that. And then I can blend the intensity values with those colors and get a really nice representation of my image. Okay, one final thing, which I think is really neat, is this inundation utility. And I'll go ahead and enable that. So this basically allows you to do kind of a simulated uh, flood mapping. Um, we can uh, raise the water level. And as I raise this thing, this is basically just taking up the elevation of the water level. And you can see areas that would flood if that would flood first, if the sea level were to rise, if you were to have a flood in this area, which areas would be the first ones to flood and which areas would end up staying out of the water. So really cool feature. You can see water coming up the river, see it coming in from the coast. Uh, very nice. So this is basically the tool. Uh, very nice for doing very basic visualizations. Like I said, not a lot of features, but if we're doing just quick visualization, getting a nice map of your point cloud, class.io works really well. All right, that's all for now, and I will see you in the next video.